Hello, this is Joshua. Welcome back to another Straight to the Bar Gym Chat. This is Gym Chat number 260, and I have a guest who's been with us on the show before, Bill Pache. Bill, you back on the show. Hey, good to be back, Josh. Awesome. And uh, we have a little bit of a delay in our connection, so uh, bear with us here. We can hear each other, we can see each other, and you should be able to see us too, but there might be just a little bit of a... Uh, delay in our in our video and audio, so uh, I just uh, bear with that. Pretend it's like uh, one of those dubbed uh, Chinese action movies here. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about how to use drop sets to get more gains. Uh, so for starting off, I'm just wondering about uh, sharing a little bit about yourself and your background. Oh, yeah, so uh, basically started... Um, Powerlifting for the internet was around back in the very early 80s. Um, did that until started about 1981 until 93. I competed and uh, actually started competing in some of the first American. It used to be called the American Drug Free Powerlifting Association. So I used to have to travel around to actually find those meets. And then in the early 1990s, uh, started Cyberpump. And uh, eventually that, that site uh, became cyberpump.com and has just kind of grown since then as well. Um, and along the way, it, it's grown uh, during that course of time by getting involved with the Internet. I ended up getting a lot of different network connections, Stuart McRobert, Dr. Ken, um, and several others. And it, it opened up some of the opportunities in print uh, from uh, uh, basically contributing articles to some of the magazines. Um, and Cyberpump still today is going going strong. Um, one of the biggest aspects of is IronHistory.com, which is a discussion forum that Joe Rourke runs, and then GripBoard.com as well. Um, so if you want to know anything about grip strength, go to GripBoard.com, and then Iron History, uh, go to Joe's community as well. Awesome. I'll be putting links to those references those sites as well down below in this. So uh, let's let's get right into drop sets. Um, and for those who are watching, uh, probably looking for ways to increase the intensity of their workout to uh, to get more progress. Perhaps they've hit a sticking point or a plateau and they want to sort of blast past that. So let's get into that. Um, for those who are watching, or just get over the fact of our video might be a little uh, slowed down and let's get right into the content. Can you uh, describe a drop set? What is it basically? What are they? So my defini uh, definition of a drop set is when you basically are performing a set and y you have a means to be able to basically extend this, this set by dropping the weight um, with, a, with one of the main things Josh and I talked about. One of the main goals is to keep your, your technique in form during the ti that time. And so uh, whether you've probably heard double or triple drops or maybe even more drops in weights, and you can basically extend the set from an intensity standpoint. That's how I would define it. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, so <laughs> when's a good time to, uh, to use drop sets? Um, well, for me personally, I like at the end of a workout uh, rather than at the beginning. Um, from that standpoint, I, I use it. You're good in, in, into the workout, and good and warmed up, and everything. And it, it's almost like a finisher. I've been using them uh, lately, especially just to, to as a kind of the the dot on the eye of the workout uh, from that perspective when I'm working a body part. Um, actually, I've, I've combined a couple exercises too, where I'll do two exercises and, and do drops in both of them at once, and basically go between two exercises. Cool. Can you describe that? Like what? Uh... Well, for example, uh, if I have uh, doing back, I set up the the hammer, um, the hammer pull down uh, high pull down, and then the hammer low row, and set that up um, with um, planned drops for when I'm going to start. And usually, I use tens. Basically, I load up tens on the sides, and and uh, to have at least at least probably three to four drops, and I start the exercise. I pick a rep range. Uh, Typically, it's something because it's the end of my workout. I'm really fatigued, so uh, so basically, I use about five to six reps on each exercise, and so I go five on one and go immediately to the other. And then when I come back, I drop the weight on the high, pull down, and then and then when I go back, I drop it on the low and go back and forth, and usually do three or four drops between the two of them. So it's basically a, like a superset um, high and low rows with drops on both exercises. And that's that's pretty. You can get pretty intense from that perspective. So, 
Um, also throw in some super very, very slow reps at the very end of all the drops, basically when the weight starts to get, you know, the weight's heavy relative because you're fatigued, but uh, basically try and go as slow as possible, create as much tension, and, and then increase the rep speed a little bit, maybe go slow again, increase the rep speed uh, for that six rep set, basically, at the end. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I often use them as well. Um, I'm using it on my last set of every exercise, so uh, still not using it for my initial sets because if you get to complete exhaustion or complete fatigue on your early sets, I find you, you're pretty much done for subsequent yeah. sets. So I will use that on my last set of each exercise, much in the way you, same way you are. Uh, it sounds like your super set is like same muscle group, so it's kind of like a giant set. Yep. Um, what, are we, what would be some of the advantages we talk about uh, increasing intensity or reducing risk of injury? What are some other benefits of using drop sets? What sort of goals would someone apply this technique with? Well, one of the um, one of the goals is obviously bringing as much blood as possible. From that standpoint, that's what I have a tendency to usually stop from a fatigue standpoint. More, uh, you know, so that would be one thing, but. Uh, you know, obviously safety, we talked about that. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons why I even do them is just because they uh, t- tend to be uh, um, where you have to decrease the weight and focus more, I, I guess, from that perspective. Um, you know, for legs, most people, in my opinion, aren't doing enough reps, so that allows you to, to uh, crank things up on from a leg standpoint and get enough tension created over enough period of time. Um, I think is one of the things, um, you know, I've talked about that before, doing higher repetitions um, from a leg development standpoint. Would this be more for a strength athlete or for for building maximal strength or for a hypertrophy I, or for fat loss? Well, I, I think it's all, I've never really, I think someone, if you more muscle you have, the more strength, in my opinion, based on your nervous system, how much your nervous system can fire it, its ability. Mm-hmm. So I think it's more of a, a, a size thing, a more right. of a bodybuilding thing than, than it would be a strength thing. But but again, how you apply it afterwards, you know, if you do the strength movements, I think you're going to be stronger uh, from a base standpoint just because, again, the other thing is if it's different than what you're doing and say you're a powerlifter yeah. mostly and you do a cycle, cycle of four weeks or something of this thing, you're going to get a bit, you're probably going to get a big boost from that standpoint when you go back to your powerlifting. Was I wasn't very smart about that when I was powerlifting at that time and yeah, I, yeah, I just powerlifted and it's like if I would have shocked my body, you know, whatever the the best workout is one you're not doing right now, right? People are stay passionate about lifting heavy. That's awesome, but I think now you and I both want to uh, look good, be healthy, you know, work yeah. a little bit more on maybe the physique and and and. And other aspects of uh, of training, rather than just how much weight can I move for singles. But well, yeah, you don't want to walk around in pain. <laughs> I, I, some people, you know, what? some people love it. But you know, and more power to them. I used to dig it. I thought if I was sore all the time, I knew I was hammering myself. You know. Yeah, not not now. Like I said, it, it's now with like like I said, it's been. I'm probably going on three years without using an end set. End set at what nothing from a pain relief standpoint. Uh, so that's that's still my goal. Not have to take a leave or aspirin or Tylenol or any of that crap. So, yeah, amen to that. Now, DOMS is another thing. I love that. I love that. You know, yeah. the, the a key muscles yeah. using high intensity training methods like drop sets will tend, to, especially if you're not used to using, will tend to give you a fair bit more DOMS than if you're not. Do uh, you agree? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, the the I think you touched on a few good points. Uh, having more time under tension. So, and, and these all relate to what you said: more hypertrophy training versus strength. Although, of course, they're related. But uh, I agree with you. It is definitely more of a hypertrophy technique to use drop sets. But you're still able to get very uh, very high repetitions in without sacrificing initially having that heavy load, which you also need. Um, and that is one of the factors for hypertrophy too: is that metabolic distress that the pump, like you said, there's the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, and then there's that metabolic, the, the lactic acid buildup, which can stimulate you know, growth hormone and whatnot. So you're getting a lot of these different uh, aspects that can help with hypertrophy by incorporating drop sets. So I think definitely there's a number of, like you met, touched on, the time under tension and the high reps. Both have a place. Yeah, and the one thing that uh, buyer beware is is if you're not actually, tar- when you do this, you're not actually targeting the muscle and you're working every other muscle in your body at the same time, 
then you, you're also going to really cut into recovery potentially, and you're not going to be able to do them as often. So if you're doing biceps, you end up end up doing power cleans and very and very sol- very don't you really hit much biceps, and you're hitting your back, your shoulders, your pecs, and lower back, and everything else, and you're you're also hitting your nervous system because you're humping it. Then that's probably not going to be a good thing to be doing all the time if you're doing drop sets. You're not going to be able to probably recover as easily as if you're really tight <laughs> with your form. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's one thing that, as opposed to trying to force a set to complete fatigue by using sloppy forced reps and humping it, like you said, um, I think drop sets facilitate your form. Uh, because it allows you to, instead of just trying to force the, or uh, cheat the reps out at the end, you you reduce the load slightly to force those reps out with strict form. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, that really, again, you're not going to worrying about, because you do drop the weight again, so you get into the point where you can use a, a better form and focus on it more and not worry about, like I said, humping it at that point. And you can extend the, your intensity, you can, can extend that rather than trying to extend it through whether it's partials or end up using other muscles of your body and in, in, in humping the weight up. So just wondering about if you are using strict form with these, what's your opinion on frequency? Like, should you still be careful in how often you use them, or are they pretty safe to use regularly? That's really a good question. I think it really depends on the individual. I think the only way you're going to find out is if you are doing with strict form. I do them almost every workout to, to some degree. Um, usually, so I, I take that back. I usually do it on the bigger, some of the bigger body parts. You know, when we're talking legs and back. I probably not so much when I'm working. You know, push push type exercises. Um, but you know, the bigger, which uh, back. You know, I kind of equivalent to deadlifts, and then and then anything from a leg standpoint. Um, I'm typically going to be incorporating at least one drop set in there. Um, but I'm not doing going nuts on every exercise and doing drops. So it's it's usually like I said it's almost I almost use it as a finisher from that standpoint on the on the bigger body parts. <clears throat> the drop sets can be used more frequently um, if you use them correctly and using strict form, like you said, every workout. Uh, if they're not sparingly within your workout, you're not using them in every set, etc. You use them as a finisher at the end of the workout. Yep. I usually use them on my big exercises so during the workout um, and I think yeah if you're smart about it they can be used more frequently um, uh, I one technique I try and do is I pick a number I try and get over 20 repetitions uh, for my drop sets and I'll try and do I'll just use do drops until I can hit a high, like at least 20 so it just as a number in my head that to try and push for so is there anyone you think should avoid this technique or be cautious about it I don't think it's actually something that a new trainee should be doing. They should be able to get enough of straight sets for one thing. Yeah. I, I think it's only someone that's advanced and looking for for extra juice, so to so to speak, in their workouts. Um, um, and again, they should be working out a while, and and they should have their form down as well. And like I said, they shouldn't be doing a drop step if they have to. If the repetitions aren't, they can't perform really good really good reps when they're doing a regular set. It's definitely not a category, no matter what experience they're at, that you shouldn't be doing it from yeah. my perspective. But definitely not a beginner's thing. You can get enough from straight sets, and you have to get enough practice in the movement when you're doing straight sets as well, in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. Yes, any other tips about drop sets or another yeah, experience? The only thing I like, like I said, is mixing in some of this uh, very, very slow at the end. And, and so you basically mix mix up your rep cadence with respect to uh, to when you're doing your drops. So especially as the weight gets lighter and you get more fatigued. Um, actually, I saw it, it was uh, Big Rami, the bodybuilder. Yes. Actually, I saw his trainer doing that with him. That's I do remember where I got it from. I said, I really like that. You know, and, and let me try it. That looks really good. That's a good Coleman? idea. Ronnie Coleman? No, Big Rami. Oh, He's, Rami. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, the big Rami, I think, yes. James okay. trains him. So there was the video yeah. of him and at the very end of the set. I think he was doing drops, actually, and he had him. Okay, Rami, we're slow, slow, slow. So he basically is almost doing basically a super slow rep. Perfect. And uh, so, yeah, I'm like, that looks fun. <laughs> so so I mixed it in and uh, just like he was doing. You know, you do that slow rep, and then you go to your regular rep cadence. So that, that's another little twist that, that's fun. 
to do it from an intensity standpoint. Yeah, no, I agree, and that also forces you to keep the tension on the muscle, like you said, and not swinging it all over the place. Yeah, so the other thing is, is obviously slowing the negative, too, besides slowing the positive, slowing you know, the negative. You know, ben Pakulski also uses oh. a similar technique. Okay. Yeah, with the slower rep uh, negatives and uh, with the drop sets as well. Yeah, and then the other thing the person can do is put in a, a kind of a peak contraction. Uh, so you can throw that in there as well. So when the weight, so it's basically you're doing an isometric, throwing an isometric hold slash, uh, you know, basically contract like you're almost hitting a pose. Mm -hmm. as well, so you can throw that in there in the mix. So you can throw throw in a, a super slow, uh, peak contraction. Go to your regular cadence to finish off, and and even if it, it go even extend a little bit more on the very last drop that you do. I have a tendency to go to really. That's where I throw those. It's kind of like throwing in the kitchen sink at the very the very last drop. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. So uh, you can hear me all right. Yep, I can still hear you now. Good. Um, <laughs> if you can find a link to that video with Big Rami, I'd like to include it in the description below. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll also try and find some reference with uh, to Ben Pakulski where he's talking about this as well because I thought. Uh, that was pretty interesting. I think we pretty much covered it. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Listen, if people want to get in touch with you, find a little bit more about uh, your coaching, your training, uh, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, definitely uh, cyberpump.com would be the way. Either that or transformyourphysique.com is another website where you can get me through. So, And I'm always on the gripboard.com too. Um, they're over there daily, so there's always lots of – Lots of activity over there. There's a lot of benders, steel benders, and there's a there's some pretty uh, top guys right now in the um, both in the Iron Mind certification and Mash Monster certification as well that are on the gripper side of things, and a heck of a lot more now. You name it. There's all sorts of if you're interested in grip, there's all sorts of things you can do from a grip feet standpoint. It's really expanded, and we've got actually a community grip feats. The community judges the different grip feet, uh, feats, and you can get on all sorts of different lists to, again, you know, with your, you know, has performed uh, certain grip feats, such as, for example, pinching 245s. So Awesome. Cool. I'm going to put links to those down below for, uh, as well so people can check it out. So if anyone's watching this and has questions, uh, definitely shoot Bill a message. Uh, find him on those uh, websites or post a comment in the description of the video below, and we'll make sure we get back to you and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, and anyone else has any questions about training, definitely uh, get in touch with us and let me know if you want to check out, uh, be a guest on a future gym chat. I'd be happy to talk to you. Bill, thank you for bearing with the, the poor connection tonight. I'm going to definitely look into this. Yeah, sounds good. No problem. We'll get it cleaned up for next time. Thanks again for being a guest on the show. I'd like to have you on again, and next time we'll uh, we'll have a nice uh, nice clean uh, video and audio. Yeah, that sounds good, Josh. Thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. Uh, we'll be back again next week. I've got a chat scheduled every week now for the next few months, so uh, with some great guests coming up. Uh, definitely join us uh, again next week, and until then, stay strong. Yeah.